I'm adding a little video of my kitty, um, Duke, who is staring at me while I am videoing, making sure I get everything right. <laughs> he says, welcome to Finding Shalom. Join me. Shalom, dear friends. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you are new to this channel, this is Finding Shalom and I am Krista. And this is a channel all about my journey to find peace and everything that goes along with that, whether it be my um, sewing, going from a big bridal store uh, to sewing out of my home, uh, just to have a little bit more quiet and peace and sanity, um, or maybe it's my Bible study, um, that has given me a lot of peace and getting to know my Savior has been um, an incredible journey and finding his peace, which is greater than any peace you can find here on earth. So, well, and also um, my journaling has really helped me with peace and also my word of the year. Um, you can see a lot of my videos on my word of the year and how God has led me to learn more and study more and, you know, kind of heal me, find some things that maybe I needed some help with, um, stuff like that. On, every Tuesday, I download a video about my journey to find peace. And on Fridays, I download um, my Bible study. And then in between, I do other videos like sewing. And I possibly, come spring here, um, want to do a little bit in the garden, may even do something with um, starting some seeds here pretty soon. I'm really getting anxious um, to start some seeds. <laughs> I It's still cold out there, but we're getting into the 40s this week and um, the sun was actually out and it felt so good. It was only like 38 or 40 and it just felt like a summer day. Not a summer day, but maybe a spring day. <laughs> but anyway, this... Um, page is all about finding peace and if that's something you're interested in please subscribe to my channel and if any of these videos ever help you out give me a like that does help uh, my channel and also give us a comment um, that also helps my channel uh, it helps YouTube know that this is something worth watching um, and I also I think the best part of the comments is I get to know who you are out there and that's important to me. I want to know, um, you know, what it's like for you out there. I want to know what you're studying. I want to know what you're sewing. You know, I, I would love to see your projects. I guess you can't really put a picture in a YouTube comment, <laughs> but I also do have email uh, on there in the description. But what this video is all about is not sewing, not Bible study, but this is part of my journey to peace. And also I would say passion. This is part of my journey to passion. And it's the way God about five, six, I'm not even sure, years ago, I was really in a slump. And, you know, every time I go into something like I had started the shop, uh, you know, it's 16 years ago, um, but I wanted to serve God. Everything I do, I want to serve God with. And I'll get really passionate and hot about something. I'll be seeking God and I'll be trying to do things just the way God wants me to. And then I fall right into kind of just survival mode, you know? And now I just need to keep the lights on. Now I just need to keep the employees paid. Um, now I just gotta keep all these brides you know, getting their dresses on time and the suppliers happy. And, you know, it just became kind of like, I don't even think this is following God anymore. I think at this point it's just exhausting. So I had run across a video of someone's testimony on Facebook and it led me over to YouTube. And that started a journey, and I think it's like five or six years ago. That started a journey that has led me to this channel, has led me to the Bible study uh, group I lead on Sunday nights. It led me to digging deeper and it led me into passion. And every once in a while, I need that like bolt. I need that, you know, it's real easy to be passionate for a little bit, 
It's kind of like, um, you know, this is a marathon, not a sprint, but sometimes I tend to sprint really, really fast and I get really excited about something and then life happens and, you know, other things get in the way and your passion kind of falls by the wayside. So I have some questions for you and I would love to hear how you guys do it. Type them in the comments. Um, how do you stay focused in anything? Whether it's your relationship with God, staying focused on a project uh, that you're working on, staying focused on whatever is in front of you. When you have to go the long distance of that, how do you stay focused? And then how do you stay inspired because sometimes you can focus on something and still not feel inspired by it. A perfect example is midway or halfway through, if I'm doing nothing but wedding gowns, at one point I am just not inspired anymore to do them. And they're not even fun anymore um, if I'm doing alterations on them. That all the appliques start to um, look the same. But if I take a break, and I do some other things, maybe uh, during prom season, this was an example. During prom season, I would get all the colors. So I'd be excited to see all the colors. And then by the end of prom season, because there was so much color, I would um, be grateful to see the beauty in wedding gowns again. And then I was looking at it through fresh eyes. I could see uh, all the pearls and all the appliques and get excited about it and and everything but when you're doing something for a long time well you know it just kind of fades um, and you go into survival mode so also how do you keep or stay passionate you know inspiration is one thing and then there's a passion which is another and so this video I wanted to talk about something that kind of gives me that punch that um, kind of reignites me or it's one of those um, heart machines you know when I can slow when I slow down and I just start getting kind of dread or the world around me especially after 2020 and probably not even after 2020 probably just the world you know um, it just feels like more and more people are leaving the church churches are dying um you know when i when i look at you know all the people hurting in the world and all the people hurting other people in the world and all the just the horrible things happening in our world um the cruelty the hate um it just starts to kind of dull my passion and then there's disappointment when things didn't quite go the way I thought they were gonna go. Or when I don't feel like what I'm doing matters. Um, and that's also a spiritual battle because sometimes, you know, there's those voices in your head um, telling you, you know, why are you even bothering? Um, you should just stop doing this. You should stop doing the channel. You should stop doing um, Bible study. You know, and that starts to eat at you. You start, or your marriage, you know, if if um, you're just feeling like the voices are saying, you know, you shouldn't have to live like this. And, you know, I'm not talking about abuse. I'm talking about ordinary, um, just ordinary marriages that are just go through that dead spot. And how do you stay passionate? How do you get inspired and stay focused again? And one way, um, you know, about five or six years ago, I was in a place like that with the shop, with my ministry, with everything in life, with God. I just felt like, it just felt like nothing I did mattered. And, um, and why was I even trying? And it all just seemed like work and exhausting and I was surviving day by day. And this video came up in my Facebook um, and it was a testimonial. And that led me to YouTube and it led me down a rabbit hole of testimonies. I went from one testimony to another testimony to another testimony to another. And 
it just listening to people how Jesus was reaching out to them and calling them out of um, other religions out of um, Islam out of um, out of New Age uh, you know the New Age world and witchcraft and in prison and it was just like empowering because suddenly I realized that my little world kind of looked like nobody cared about Christianity anymore. My little world just looked like people at church were just playing the part, but nobody was passionate and nobody, it was just kind of like a desert dry land. And yet when I watched these videos, I started to see passion in other people. And also I felt like God wasn't answering and God wasn't, maybe we've reached a time when God isn't reaching out to bring people to him anymore. Maybe we're in just the end of the world where, you know, he's just given up on us. These are my crazy thoughts. But um, as I started to see this and see hundreds of people, Muslims, um, that Jesus was calling out in their dreams and they were coming to Christ. And they weren't just coming to Christ. You know, we often in a very Christian world think about coming to Christ as this just decision you make for your life. In these worlds, they had to lose everything, including almost losing their lives in order to follow Christ. So these weren't easy, um, these were real conversions that they couldn't help but say, Jesus is real and I'm turning my whole life around and I could die for this. Um, so watching those videos would, you know, just really kind of just make me know that God is still out there and God is still moving. You can actually uh, look on YouTube and see, you know, Islam to Jesus or Muslims to Jesus. And you will see that hundreds, if not thousands, are coming out and realizing that Jesus is real. And there's other parts of the world. Um, China is a big one where they have banned the Bible. They have banned Bible studies and ba banned churches. And the harder they ban these things, the faster Christianity is growing. It's like a fire that they can't stop. And why? Because they found the real Jesus and it's authentic. And so watching those things would just ignite my passion. And um, I ended up, I'm going to put a bunch of those down in the description because I want to share some of my favorites with you. Some that turned me completely around. I'd go down, you know, one rabbit hole of um, where all the Muslims had gotten converted and I'd watch all those. And one was uh, Nabil Qureshi. Qureshi. And I watched him all the way until he passed away. I think it was like 2016. And even on his deathbed, even though his parents thought, well, God is, Allah is punishing you because you have, you know, walked away. Even in that, to, on his deathbed, he said, you know, he had some words. He has a video there about calling out for people to find Christ. And I'm going to put um, Nabil's um, testimony down in the description so you can see that one. Um, and then there was Micah Wilder, and he was a Mormon missionary that uh, went, I think, to Florida and found Jesus in the midst of it. And what an exciting um, testimony. And I followed his testimony and then his mother's testimony and then his sister's and his brother's testimony which led me of course to other testimonies and um, I just couldn't get enough and I also realized we are called to spread the gospel we are called Jesus says you know go out into all the world and preach the gospel and these people are doing it Jesus got a hold of them 
And even in dangerous situations, they're going out and spreading the gospel, um, telling everybody about Jesus. And then <clears throat> one of my favorites, let me get something a little bit. One of my very favorites um, was Stephen Van Cars. When I came across that one, I really knew God was starting to move. It was amazing. So Stephen Bancars, and I will put his link to his testimony in the description. And once you get to know how to spell his last name, you can see all of his work. Um, he was a new age, um, I think he was, he had a website. I don't know if YouTube was big back then. I think he did have a YouTube channel and everything. But anyways, he had like the number two biggest uh, new age website. He was making over $50,000 a month just um, doing articles and stuff on um, all the new age practices of Kundalini spirit and I don't know, all the... I'm trying to think of all the different things um, in that um, and about meditating and you know the the other worlds and stuff like that so he was really big into new age he had walked away from his Christian faith he was very into aliens and believing that they were alive and he just has an amazing testimony and Jesus got a hold of him on his back deck I think or back porch and in a huge way and he did you know a 180 turned his life completely around and um, then right after that um, I came across Doreen Virtue he was um, interviewing her so she has written she was like one of the number one best-selling authors in the new age movement you know everything from angels and witchcraft and you know um tarot cards and all of that kind of stuff and jesus got a hold of her and then he helped disciple her to get her uh, back to christ um i think after she had already come back to christ but so i'll put their interview in there and that one made me really realize okay there is not an area that God is not reaching and grabbing people out of. And he is grabbing the ones that are at the top of that. He's grabbing the ones at the top of the food chain. So, you know, Stephen Bancars and Doreen Virtue, they were selling stuff and, you know, going to conferences and selling stuff to people uh, about new age. And um, all of a sudden now they are an influence for Christ. Now, Thousands of people are leaving the New Age world and coming to Christ because of their new YouTube channels um, about Jesus. So that's an exciting one. And then I came across one. The others changed my life as far as gave me passion again and gave me hope in God again. But then I came across Keith Green and he died and well beginning of the 80s somewhere in there or mid 80s and his um ministry ended up to be in the late 70s early early 80s um he was someone seeking and he he tried drugs and tried everything i'm going to put his link in the description um he his testimony is actually after his death uh, done by his wife and stuff. It is very old footage, but if you put it in and you're like, the quality of this is not good. It's blurry at times. The, you know, uh, the sound, you know, cuts out at one point, but watch it to the end because he will change your life as far as that goes. Um, why it changed my life was that number one, I connected to it. There was a time in the late 70s or no early 70s that my parents were kind of doing missionary work in Mexico and these are my earliest memories. We would uh, on a weekend um, 
load up our yellow 70s looking van. You know, it probably was from the 60s or the 50s because it was kind of barely running and um, bright yellow. And we would load it up um, the whole back with like mattresses and food, rice and beans and um, some medicine, um, just anything that people could donate and take. And my parents would take it um, to Mexico to um, there. It wasn't in the main cities. It was um, out in the dumps um, where there were people living who had made their houses out of um, cardboard boxes and the garbage kind of, and they were living, they were kind of like homeless people. It was a homeless section of the country. Um, and my parents, uh, my dad and his best friend, um, one of them found a baby in the dumpster. And so they started an orphanage there and they built it, um, you know, I remember actually them building that little bits of it. I, you know, I was probably three or four, five, six when they were doing all of this. Um, but I remember um, us being there and the whole little village area, everybody would come running and, um, you know, see what my dad had brought that weekend. Um, and so Keith Green's video kind of brought back some of those memories of doing something passionate, passionately for Christ, reaching out and helping people. Um, but then the other thing it did is when I watched it about how he couldn't help but just tell everybody he knew about Jesus, and then um, he started helping people, having them in his home. Then he started a Bible study um, because he was saved at a Bible study. Um, and we ended up in 2019, I think the spring or early summer of 2019, I had watched this and just been inspired by it and just felt like God was saying, start a Bible study, teach people how to read my word, teach people how to study the Bible. So we started in Acts, which is the early church, uh, the first church. And we started studying Acts. Um, and, you know, we've had a lot of people come and go in that Bible study. We've had some that have just been faithful and stayed with us. And now we have gone through Acts. And then we went to uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Yes, we did study through Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And actually, we had a blast through it. I tried to make it really fast so that they wouldn't get too bored. Um, but now we kind of wish we would have slowed down because we got so much out of it and we're still going back. Um, then we did, uh, what's up? Uh, judge, we did Ruth, Judges and Ruth and we did, um, oh, Joshua is in there. Anyways, we started at the beginning and we've gotten all the way to um, 1 Samuel. And so now we are in 1 Samuel and oh my gosh, the whole Bible has just opened up to us. And this group of people who have, a lot of them have gone to church their whole life, or some of them never went to church. But all of us are like, hey, I never learned all this, you know, and it is exciting. And we're starting to grasp onto things. And now that with you guys, I'm studying in the New Testament, because I've been studying in the Old Testament, it's all kind of like, wow. Oh, that's what the Old Testament, okay, now the New Testament's making sense because the Old Testament, you know, now makes sense. Um, so it is so good. So it is Keith Green's music and his video that got me started down that road. Um, and I had a couple other um, Facebook pages where we did 120 days of prayer and that was through um, when I was studying Nehemiah and uh, the building of the walls. And he prayed for 120 days before he went and asked the king um, and before he did anything. And so uh, the goal of those two pages were to pray for 120 day cycles, which ironically, uh, one of the pages ended up going, I don't know, like three, four um, cycles. The hard part was that when I reached out for the first group to just the people around me and that I knew in, in our town, like we should just pray for our community, 
I didn't get a lot of response. And one thing I've noticed is with Christians um, that grew up in the church and stuff like that is that they're very quiet, you know, and they're reserved and they don't, um, they just aren't passionate. And sometimes my passion kind of feels odd to me. Um, when I get passionate and I want to share with somebody, um, I often feel like people are like, mm, you know, <laughs> and maybe that's because I have a mom that was kind of called the Jesus freak or the, you know, the Jesus lady, um, growing up and she still has almost a crazy passion. And so, and it's not always good at all. And it's not even, uh, I can't even explain it, but I think my fear is that when I get passionate, that I will become her. And so that's like this battle in me that I want to serve Jesus. I am in love with Jesus. I want to pour out my heart. I want to tell everybody. I want to tell people, oh my gosh, you guys got to know this, this Jesus. He gives you such peace. He is so great. Um, and then when I go to do that, and if people don't react quite right, I get this um, feeling of, oh, I'm being like, I'm too much, you know. So when I end up coming across these YouTube um, channels and these YouTube videos of testimonies and of people that are passionate, as passionate, and it's real, because there's some weird videos out there, kind of like my mom, but... I want authentic Christianity. I want, I'm in love with Jesus, not all the rules of the church, kind of. I'm not, I don't want, I love going to church because, you know, it's a social club or I'm trying to figure out how to say that, but I want authentic Christianity. I want people to see and hear what I feel um, for Jesus. And so that's why um, some of these videos, they excite me because when I get down and I feel alone in my passion, then I watch these passionate Christians that are so excited about Jesus and I know I'm not alone. Um, and that happened for me this past week. Um, this past week, I was getting down and feeling, you know, a little bit of an attack, a spiritual attack, and um, feeling like I wanted to kind of give up, kind of feeling, it was just, it was silly thoughts, um, just like, what I'm doing isn't making a difference, you know, all those kind of crazy thoughts. God brought into my YouTube channel um, uh, an the next set of testimony. All these testimonies that I'm talking about, you know, were five or six years ago and have slowly through the years I've watched them. Um, but I haven't found any new exciting ones lately. And this one uh, was, it's Beckett, um, what was his name? It's um, Beckett Cook. And he was interviewing um, China Phillips Baldwin, who she is, from Phillips, uh, Wilson Phillips, uh, who sang all those beautiful songs in uh, the 90s. And uh, also her mom and dad were from the Mamas and the Papas um, back in the day. And um, they sang like California Dreaming and all of that kind of stuff, really great songs that you probably know. Anyways, she was not a Christian, not raised in that environment at all. And uh, she came to know Jesus and he was interviewing her and she told her story. And then I ended up down another road of amazing testimony videos. I ended up watching uh, China Phillips with um, Kathy Lee Gifford. And then I just bawled that I really wanted to be in the room with them and sit down with them in such excitement. And I wanted to be um, surrounded by someone who had these great encouraging words and was, you know, just throwing out God's promises. And I'll put those videos in the description as well. Um, and, you know, I ended up 
then seeing her interview like Victoria Jackson, um, which was a completely hilarious, um, a completely hilarious uh, interview. Um, but in the end, they just started talking about how much they love Jesus. I want to surround myself with people like that. Um, I don't know if you do too, but that's what ignites me. That's what inspires me. And like I said, just with, just like with crafting or sewing, you need sometimes some inspiration. Um, you need some passion and, you know, reading the Bible and Jesus himself and God, they give me inspiration, but sometimes I need to get it ignited by someone else who is seeing God, um, when maybe he's quiet in my life. Um, so I, I really wanted to share that with you today. Um, because I don't know who else to share all these wonderful videos with, with these videos, um, just in the course of the last five or six years have completely changed the direction of my life. Um, they went from, you know, I was serving God and I loved God, um, but they directed my passion and they started, I mean, I wouldn't have the Sunday night Bible study group that I have. I wouldn't have closed my shop and went simpler to find peace and, you know, do stuff out of my home. I wouldn't have had that confidence. Um, I wouldn't have wanted, I now just desire to sit. I, you know, I love sewing. But sometimes I just want to sit and um, devour the Word of God and just sit in His presence and just try to figure out the next thing. I want to learn more, I have a hunger, um, and I wouldn't have done that without this these um, testimony videos. Just kind of really, um, you know, I don't know, just um, making sure that um, I don't know, lighting my my passion, lighting my fire. I'm not making sense anymore. <laughs> but, you know, um, so what do all of these people, you know, have in common? I mean, China Phillips Baldwin, who married a Baldwin. And, you know, she has now reignited my passion uh, for Jesus. And um, this Beckett Cook, who left his whole life behind to follow Jesus. What an amazing story. And Keith Green, who has, you know, now unfortunately passed away, but his life is still, you know, igniting passion in others. His life is still turning people over to Christ. I mean, his life started, his example started our Bible study on Sunday nights. Um, you know, Nabil, he has now passed away, um, unfortunately, from stomach cancer. But he, his life lives on. Because his testimony, I hope his parents um, have come to the Lord. I really do. Um, and Stephen Bancars, just his testimony from five years ago. He's a new Christian, and yet God turned him around so amazingly. And Micah Wilder, and how it changed his whole family. His whole direction of his whole entire life changed. And, um, you know, we talked about Matthew a couple weeks ago, Matthew, the tax collector in the Bible, and how he just walked away from his table, uh, all of the money, just walked away from his life and left it all and followed Jesus. And that's what these examples on these YouTube channels and um, these great testimonies do is they show us that you can leave it all behind and follow Jesus even today and it shows us that Jesus is still moving God is still reaching out to all kinds of people so I am going to fill <laughs> you're gonna have so many videos I am going to fill the description in this video down below um, or down below I'm not sure which way it goes <laughs> um, with these links to these videos and I'll put a description of what they are it may take you a month, a couple months. It may take you a while to get through these videos. But if you sit down, I, I guarantee you will be on fire for Christ. You will, your life will change because somebody else, God called out to somebody else and they jumped and followed. And you can't help 
when Jesus calls out to your life to jump and follow. So I hope you enjoy these videos and I hope you maybe go and subscribe to some of their pages. Um, they are all out there in a fire. Some of them are out there right now in a firestorm of people who probably give them a lot of hard times because they came from a different world. They came from the drug world or Hollywood. They came from fashion. They came, you know, from a world that's, they came from Islam. They came from, um, you know, the new age world. And when they left, they left it all behind. And I'm sure that the people um, in their past did not let them go easily. And they have, I'm sure people have given them a hard time. So we need to give them our love and um, thank them. But anyways, I hope this inspires you. And I hope I get it posted before too late tonight. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful week. We'll see you Friday uh, for our Bible study. And we are studying about Jesus as Lord over the Sabbath and um, how Jesus is once again fighting with the Pharisees. <laughs> so he's telling them the rules are not what you made them. So hope to see you guys on Friday. Have a wonderful week and we'll talk to you soon. Shalom.